But let's go back. You see, today the Muslim world, these are our Arab brethren, Alhamdulillah, they have run into money, you see. They don't know what to do with it. They run amok with their money. Here's human trait, human weakness. But 144 years ago, almost exactly 144, one gross, 12 dozen years ago, Friday, 8th of May, 1840, an Anglican Christian in England by the name of Thomas Carlyle, described as one of the greatest thinkers of the past century, Thomas Carlyle. He wrote a book called Heroes and Hero Worship. It was a textbook for metric students some years ago. I don't know whether they still prescribe that. Beautiful literature. So he wrote a book on heroes and hero worship. And he chose our Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as his hero prophet. Not Moses, not David, not Solomon, not Jesus, but Muhammad وسلم, as his hero prophet. And he explains to his Anglican audience, because at that time in history, it was a sacrilege to say anything good about the prophet of Islam. It was, it was the worst crime, worst blasphemy any Christian can do is to say anything good about the holy prophet Muhammad. At that time in history, that's 144 years ago, he's telling, addressing his audience, trying to pacify them, he says, as there is no danger now of any of us ever becoming Mohammedans, there's no danger, he's got no fear that anybody might become Mohammedans. This is the term he used, you see. Mohammedans, I mean to say all the good things about him that I justly can, because there's no fear that any of you will become Mohammedans, who is Anglican audience. Because as he says, Thomas Carlyle, that the people were trained to hate the man Muhammad and his religion. They were trained like dogs are trained in South Africa to hate black men. They are trained. There's a system of training. You can train dogs to hate all black people. You don't know. So the Christian world was trained to hate the man Muhammad and his religion. So now he's making a start making a breakthrough so he has to appease them so don't worry i know nobody will be converted to mohammedanism of course there is no such thing as a mohammedan you know that and there is no such thing as mohammedanism these are misnomers these terms were invented by the westerner the christian world they invented these terms because they reasoned that since they are the worshipers of christ so they are Christians. The worshippers of Christ are Christians. The worshippers of Buddha are Buddhists. So the worshippers of Muhammad must be Mohammedans. Now you see, that's how they reason. And we were also ignorant. We didn't know. When I was small, we didn't know. You know, our masjid, West Street Mosque was Mohammedan Mosque. Our Brook Street Cemetery, the main cemetery in Durban was Mohammedan Cemetery. We didn't know. Because the white man says, calls us Mohammedan, Mohammedan, so he says, we are Mohammedan. At school, when I was a young fellow, I remember, you know, I used to wear that, um, the Turkish face, you know, the red one, that our Malay brethren wear, and I saw them on TV. But, well, we used to wear that, you see. Those are fashionable, the Turks, you know, our brethren, they were one time leading Muslim nation, so we used to wear the red faces. So we go to school, red face on. So the teacher tells all the students, take off your hats, caps or hats, take them off. So everybody takes it off. The Hindus, the Christians, they take it off. We keep it on. He said, we are Mohammedan, sir. <laughs> that, that's actually what he said. We are Mohammedan, sir, so we don't take off our hats. All the boys, they must wear knickers. We wear long pants. Why? Because we are Mohammedan, sir. We didn't know. We didn't know. Wallah, we didn't. Now we know better. Alhamdulillah. But this poor man, in 1840, he says, no fear, anybody becoming Mohammedan, so he wants to do justice to this man. And he's quoting a Westerner, a writer of his day, you know, a very popular writer of his day, by the name of Pop Cocky. Now, this Pop Cocky wrote the story of our Nabi. And in that story, he wrote that Muhammad, وسلم, he had trained pigeons to pick up peas from his ears. Peas. You know, pea? In his ear, he used to put, and he trained the pigeon to take it out. 
I wish he told the people that's Jibreel, you know, giving him wahi, revelation. This khabis, that khabis, that's what he wrote in his book. So he was asked, he said, where did you get this information? That Muhammad had trained pigeons to pick up peace from his ears, which he gave off as revelation. He said, no, no way. But he said, look, I've told you myself, some authority for making statements. He said, no, I just felt like writing it. That's all. This is how they were trained to hate the man Muhammad and his religion. As dogs are trained to hate black men. So this Thomas Carlyle, speaking about our Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you know, beautiful words he writes. He says about our Nabi, a poor, hard, toiling, ill-provided man, careless of what vulgar men toil for. He's not worried about things that men, vulgar men toil for. Not a bad man, I should say. Something better in him than hunger of any sort or these wild Arab men fighting and jostling three and twenty years at his hand in close contact with him always would not have reverenced him so they were wild men these Arabs they said they were wild men bursting ever and anon into quarrel into all kinds of fierce sincerity without right worth and manhood no man could have commanded them without that quality of sincerity, integrity, manhood. He said, no man could have commanded them. They called him prophet, you say. He says, why? He stood there face to face with them, bare, not en enshrined in any mystery, visibly clouting his own clothes, cobbling his own shoes, fighting, counseling, ordering in the midst of them. They must have seen what kind of a man he was. Let him be called what you like. Call him what you like. No emperor with his tyras was obeyed as this man in a cloak of his own clouting. During three and twenty years of rough actual trial, I find something of a veritable hero necessary for that of itself. A Muslim describes it, that mard kamil that perfect man. Allah says, Lakat kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasana. So most certainly in the apostle of Allah, you have the best example. This is in 1840. 1840.